Hello, and welcome to this Sotten Brain Hub video. I'm Ollie, and today I'm going to be taking you through the flow of the CSF. To begin with, let's talk about what CSF is. CSF stands for Cerebrospinal Fluid, and it's the clear colourless liquid that surrounds the brain and spinal cord. It acts as a buffer providing basic mechanical and immunological protection to the brain. CSF is created and reabsorbed constantly throughout the day, with around 500 milliliters being created every day, but there only being around 125 milliliters at any single time. CSF is created by specialized epidermal cells located in the choroid plexuses, which are located in the ventricles of the brain. Now we have covered what CSF is, we can move on to covering how it flows throughout the brain. To begin with, CSF is secreted from the choroid plexuses, located in the lateral ventricles of the brain. You can often see remnants of these choroid plexuses within the lateral ventricles on dissection. From the lateral ventricles, the CSF flows through the intraventricular foramina, also known as the foramina of Monroe, into the third ventricle. From the third ventricle, it then travels through the cerebral aqueduct, also known as the aqueduct of Sylvius, flowing into the fourth ventricle. From the fourth ventricle, the CSF passes into the subarachnoid space through four openings, the central canal of the spinal cord, the median aperture, and the two lateral apertures. It then circulates around the brain and spinal cord in this subarachnoid space. Finally, the CSF exits the subarachnoid space through the arachnoid granulations or arachnoid villi. These arachnoid granulations are outpouchings of the arachnoid mater into the dural venous sinuses. The largest of these granulations are found lying along the superior sagittal sinus, which can be seen demonstrated in the diagram here, but they are also present in the other dural sinuses. Finally, whilst the images give a visual recap of the flow of CSF, we're going to cover a few pathologies that affect the CSF system. Hydrocephalus is an abnormal accumulation of CSF in the ventricular system of the brain. In some cases, this is due to an obstruction of the passage of CSF from infection, injury, a mass or congenital abnormality, which leads to a high pressure state. Alternatively, hydrocephalus can occur in a normal pressure state, where there is an imbalance between production and reabsorption of CSF. The symptoms associated with hydrocephalus include abnormal gait, urinary incontinence, progressively impaired cognition, and nausea and vomiting. The treatment is often by insertion of a ventriculoperitoneal shunt, which diverts CSF to another part of the body. The second pathology we're going to talk about is a CSF leak. This can occur due to physical trauma, iatrogenic procedures, or idiopathically. It is associated with intracranial hypotension, which manifests as a headache made worse by standing, moving, or coughing. Treatment depends on the cause, but options include an epidural blood patch, spinal surgery, or fibrin glue. It is worth noting that a post-lumbar puncture headache is due to a CSF leak, but it is generally self-limiting and does not need treatment. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.